Hey everybody, welcome back. This case has war and national security and presidents suing newspapers. What could be more American? Go ahead and do your civic duty and smash that like button for me. This is another Vietnam era Supreme Court case. Facts? In 1967, the Defense Department began producing a massive report, today known as the Pentagon Papers, on the history of U.S. involvement in the region. Fast forward to 1971, when a man named Daniel Ellsberg leaked 43 volumes, nearly 7,000 pages of the report, to the New York Times and Washington Post. Within two days of the New York Times publishing their first article containing their findings, the Nixon administration succeeded in getting a district court-ordered injunction blocking further publication of the papers by the New York Times. The issue for the Supreme Court was, did the Nixon administration's attempt to block publication of classified information violate freedom of the press? Due to the time-sensitive nature of the case, the Supreme Court ruled quickly and issued a brief per curiam opinion holding that the government did not have the right to block publication of the Pentagon Papers. To justify blocking the publication, the government would have needed to show that publishing the papers would have caused grave and irreparable damage. Not surprisingly, the court's reasoning is centered around the freedom of the press. As a result of that freedom, there is a heavy presumption against the constitutional validity of government claims of prior restraint even in cases involving national security. Okay, that'll look nice written down in your notes, but what does it mean? Let's start with prior restraint. Prior restraint is basically a type of censorship that prohibits a particular expression or publication before the fact. Now, the court here did not say that prior restraint is totally unconstitutional. Rather, what the ruling said is that there is a heavy presumption against prior restraint. That basically means that it's gonna be extremely difficult for the government to prove that the prior restraint they want to impose is valid. Again, it's possible, but extremely difficult. If the government could have proven that the publication would have caused inevitable, direct, and immediate consequences, putting American troops in danger, for example, the prior restraint could have been valid. This case is viewed as a victory for civil liberties advocates as it did not cede the government additional power in wartime, but rather upheld the First Amendment's freedom of the press. Notice this powerful statement from a concurring opinion, stating that the executive branch has forgotten the purpose of the First Amendment, and notice that the justice isn't willing to compromise this just because of national security concerns. As is often the case, not everybody agreed. A dissenting opinion stressed that First Amendment rights are not absolute, and referred back to falsely shouting fire in a theater. All right, well, that's it for this one. Until next time, this has been a Lamoney production. Thanks again for watching. Do me a huge favor and hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and check out the Ultimate Review Packet. I made it just for you, and I will see you in the next video.